What's up everybody? Sorry for the weird upload schedule, but as I said in my last video, I'm gonna continue going back to a regular schedule. So every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 p.m. Pacific time, look out for new videos. So I left Santiago, Chile, and I was there for two and a half weeks, and now I'm in Rio de Janeiro. And because I was in Chile for so long, maybe some of you are wondering how it was down there and any advice I might have. And since this is the second part of a two-part series of Santiago Chile, I'm gonna give you all a review and give you all my recommendations about what there is to do and stuff that might that you might be interested in seeing or doing while you're in Santiago. Um, because I took some of the recommendations from the locals that I asked in that first part, and I went to some of the places and checked all that out. And also I got a haircut here in Brazil. I'm doing a full reset of my hair and shout out to this guy. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know his name, but shout out to him for resetting my hair. Don't worry, longer hair is coming back and maybe when I'm in Asia or something, I'll get a haircut again. So just stay tuned for that too. So this video is going to be an overview of what to do in Santiago, Chile. I think if you have heard of what to do there in Santiago and just what it's like around there, I'd still stay and watch just because based on from what I heard from the locals, things have changed quite a bit since the pandemic. When I read about Santiago, it's completely different from when I was here. So in the part one video, the locals were just kind of giving me some recommendations on like neighborhoods and specific places to go. And I ended up going to some of those places and also ended up sidetracking and doing other things as well. So. Basically my whole time, those two and a half weeks I was in Santiago, I visited various neighborhoods and also specific places. And I'm gonna give you all basically just a recommendation of the places I went to and places out, out of all the places I went to, what I would recommend to someone who is visiting to Santiago. So uh, I'm basically just gonna give an overview of five specific places to go to and then five neighborhoods to go to so that if the places that I recommend don't seem like somewhere you want to visit, then you could just go to the neighborhood and maybe something will catch your eye there. So let's get started with the uh, places. The first place I'd recommend going to is Cerro Manquehue, which is basically a hike on the outskirts of the city. I did it with someone through Airbnb, but you could just do it by yourself. Getting there is a little complicated. You have to take a taxi or an Uber all the way up to the starting point because the starting point's in a residential area. So they might not even take you up all the way there. Public transportation is a little bit tough. The bus stop is like at the very bottom of the residential neighborhood. So you'd have to walk all the way up to get there. But I think it's a very nice hike. It's like, there are two different hikes you can do, like a higher, a taller one and a smaller one. I ended up doing the smaller one. The smaller one takes like an hour, whereas like the tall one takes like three hours. But it's a nice uh, urban hike to do. You get to see a whole overview of the city. And at the top, there's like a huge cross. So take pictures uh, and whatnot. And then the second place I'd recommend is San Cristobal, which is basically, it's kind of like, uh, I would say Santiago's Christ Redeemer. It's like a big statue, um, religious statue overlooking all of Santiago. And it's nice because you have to take like a funicular, which is like just a tram car all the way up. And as you go up, you can see like the levels of Santiago as you go. And then once you get to the top, you visit the statue and- The line was so long though. I think I waited down there for like 30 minutes before a new one came. If anyone comes here, I highly recommend getting here early because that wait was so long. Where San Cristobal is located, it's kind of within like a huge park. So it's not just that statue that's there, but also like gardens and like a swimming pool. Oh, there are cable cars there as well. So you can buy a ticket that takes you all the way up to the statue from the bottom. And then you could take, you could you could buy tickets on the cable car to go around the park. But the park's humongous. So I recommend, I guess, playing to stay the whole day there. Thirdly, I'd recommend Santa Lucia Hill. It's a hill in the middle of the city in La Stadia, which is just a neighborhood in Santiago. And I think it was built on top of a volcano or it's built around a surrounding dormant volcano. And once you get to the top, there's like an urban park or urban garden and you can I don't know, sit, eat, whatnot. And then you could take the stairs all the way to the top. 
And then you could see like a view, a 360 view of the downtown center of Santiago. Uh, it's not like a very big area, so you could probably spend like one or two hours there. But I, I would say there's like a lot of good, nice architecture. Uh, so you could probably spend a little more time just walking around taking some pictures. All right, this, this place I'd highly recommend, it's called Los Dominicos. It's an artisan market. It's basically like, um, like a, it feels like a small town that's preserved within the bigger city. I think it's remnants of the colonial past that Santiago has just because it was colonized by, I think, the Spanish before. So you can walk around and see some of that old architecture and there are just markets in that area with like a couple restaurants. So you can shop, get some souvenirs and see like what the buildings were like when they were colonized. And then the last place I'd recommend to go to would be uh, Parque Bicentenario. I think it's the best the best park in the sense that it's really nice and modern. It's a very modern park and sometimes they hold events there. Yeah, they're, they ha there's like a little zoo in the park, like there are fish and birds that just kind of hang out and they're like sectioned areas that I think that are specifically designated for those specific animals. So if you're into seeing that type of stuff, I highly recommend going. Plus there's a restaurant nearby where you can eat now on to the neighborhoods in Santiago. So I spent like a lot of time just walking around the neighborhoods and just getting a sense of what it's like in each of them. And I think these are the, these are the five best ones that I visited out of all of them. Uh, sorry to anyone who might be seeing this and thinking that their neighborhood was represented, but I personally had a good time at these neighborhoods. So hopefully other people will too. But the first neighborhood that I'd recommend is Barrio Italia. I would say it's a very touristy area. It's a very nice place to eat, and there are a lot of restaurants, coffee shops, ice cream shops, just anything you could think of. And you basically just kind of walk around, but it's just a one street line, uh, I think spanning like eight, nine blocks. And restaurants are on that one street, and you can go into the buildings. There are small shops that you can shop at. Uh, they have like artisan goods as well, like Los Dominicos Market. I mentioned earlier and I feel like it's a good area to spend like an hour or two uh, just walking around. Secondly, I'd recommend Las Condes, which is basically <laughs> middle to upper class or upper middle class, upper class residents of Santiago, that's where they live. And that's where Los Dominicos market is in that area or that region. So that place is the place I'd recommend and the reason why you'd visit Las Condes. And there are also some nice restaurants in that area as well. Another place I recommend is Providencia. I actually didn't get to spend too much time in Providencia. It's basically just a big shopping area. There's like a huge mall there. I didn't end up going, but it's a very modern mall and that's where Parque Bacentenario is. And also in the last the last video or part one video, someone mentioned Sky Costanera, which is the highest skyscraper in Santiago. All that's located in Providencia. So, and there's like a lot of things to do in terms of shopping. And then of course, for my fourth, neighborhood. I recommend Patronato. The only reason why I recommend it is because I because K-Town is situated there and of course I have to recommend K-Town. I spent a lot of my time in that area. I think the Korean food is pretty good and it's nice to see a blended culture there, Chilean and Korean. Of course there are like other places to go within Patronato but I would say it's like a more slept on place. Not a lot of people know about K-Town in Santiago. I obviously didn't and I know some people have commented in, in other videos that they didn't know that there was a K-Town in Santiago. So if you like Korean food, highly recommend Patronato. Go to Hana, Seoul, and then of course visit Lotte Mart. Shout out Lotte Mart because it's a uh, family there is super nice and they have a lot, a great selection of stuff to choose from. And then lastly, I'd recommend where I was staying, basically La Stadia, which is what a majority of people had mentioned in the interview in the first part. It's, I'd say like a more modern, hip neighborhood. There's like a lot of history there, obviously. A lot of arts in that neighborhood, just kind of on the walls, around the restaurants and everywhere. And there are a lot of street performers just kind of randomly performing in different areas, music, people jumping around. There's also like a small market that is there. I think I saw it like every day when I was there. So you can just walk around, buy souvenirs. There's like a lot of different things you can choose from in that area, there are a lot of restaurants. So people come absorb the whole vibe there because I think it's very unique and it definitely feels different from the rest of the city. So 
Here we are in Las Narrea. Uh, this is a typical neighborhood here in Santiago. Very good nightlife. You can find bars, you can find places where you can have a beer or other drinks. Uh, like music as you can find there. Can you see? So, uh, different, different type of people come here from different parts of the world. So you're very welcome to come here whenever you want. So enjoy your night. And this guy is great. This is the best guy ever. <laughs> hey, what's up, bro? Jay Hota, Jay Freestyle. My best friend. Mente, Yo. No lamb. No lamb. My bro. From the United States of America. Jota Freestyle isométrica. Improvisando en acción, en el bajo llave, poniéndole el corazón. ¿Cómo está mi amigo Kim? Que ya llegas hasta aquí. Te despido de Chile, te despido de mi país. Que te vaya bien por Latinoamérica. Por eso que lo hago tirándome de esta métrica. Que te vaya bien, Kim. Yo sé que te toca bailar por las playas de Brasil. Esa es la historia que te cuento cuando entro de esta forma rapeando en este momento Ya tú sabes J Peter poniéndole el talento bajo llave Y mi rima yo te la presento Dentro de esta acción Así es como despido a mi hermano de la nación Que te vaya bien Estados Unidos Te lo digo de esta forma con la flecha escupida So yeah that was Astadia Thank you J Freestyle for that little rap I'd say just Overview of just going in Santiago, I had like all the research I did of Santiago before I left was that Santiago is like a super safe area. It's one of the safest in Latin America, which may be true, but uh, a lot of locals were telling me that after the pandemic and after 2019, when there were fires and riots in Santiago because of the social unrest, Santiago became and is slowly becoming a little more dangerous. And so people just have to be wary when they travel to Santiago. Okay. Like I didn't even take my camera out that much when I was there because there are stories of people just kind of going on motorcycles and snatching like phones out of your hand and like high valuable things. I just highly recommend being really careful when, you, when you're visiting Santiago. Of course, like it's a very beautiful area and they're amazing people to meet and a lot of things to see and do. Uh, I think one, my one piece of advice to anyone visiting there is just be more careful than you had read online, just because I feel like the blogs now are a little outdated. In 2023, especially, it's more dangerous than it was before. Yeah, just to sum up, all those places that I recommended, all those neighborhoods and even the specific places are all accessible by the Metro and the Metro is super safe to take. Obviously, it's not always the most reliable. Like the day that I, one of the days I went, someone ended up jumping on the train and the whole subway system had to close down for that day. And it sounded like it was pretty normal now in Santiago, which is a little bit sad to hear. The subway is a good and safe way to get around the city. All those places though are accessible by the red line. So just take the red line Metro and various stops, you'll be able to go to all those neighborhoods that I recommended. I hope this gave you all a good idea of what there is to do there in Santiago, Chile in 2023. And as always, thank you all for watching. Please comment, like, share. I'm gonna be visiting more cities and if you like something like videos like this, please comment in the comments below. Give it a thumbs up, anything to let me know that I'm doing the right thing here. So thank you all and see you in the next one. Bye. You and her DM, I'm in her mouth, we not the same. Not the same. Flipping the funk, the heat, the fire, got the flame. Came with the gift, the gab, and blast with lots of